Welcome to Hacks, where I try and simplify cybersecurity. We're back looking again at hackthisside.org. We've done challenges one through to six, so today we're looking at basic mission number seven. So looking at this challenge, you'll see the following sentences. This time, Network Sam has saved the unencrypted password in an obscurely named file saved in this very directory. In other unrelated news, Sam has set up a script that returns the output from the Unix cal command. Here is the script. Enter the year you wish to view and hit view. So we have a password in a obscurely named file. Now we could run tools like derb and gobuster to try and find the location of the file, but if it's that obscurely named we may never find it there is of course brute forcing the directories but that could take forever depending on the length of the file name so the one thing that draws my interest right away is the fact that he's implemented a function on the web application that uses the unix cal command what this suggests to me is it's passing commands directly to the operating system in order to display the output so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the functionality of the calendar by entering a year and seeing what we come back with. So I'm going to put one and click view. It's a bit dark, but I'll highlight it. So as you can see, it's showing me year one and every month within that year. So what this suggests is that this Perl script, cal.pl, is actually running a Unix command called cal um, and passing it a passing it whatever input you are submitting to the application so it will be storing that in a variable and then using that variable to append to the script when it's running the cal command now in order to solve this challenge what you'll need to do is you'll need to perform a command injection now, a command injection allows the malicious actor to execute arbitrary commands on the host system. So, in order to do this, what we first need to do is escape the cal command. And on Linux systems, you can do that with the semicolon. So, as you can see there, I've tried some other commands on there, like etsy.passwd and seeing what user I am with the who I am command. Um, now... It's not going to work on this because it has been programmed specifically for the ls command because it's not actually performing command execution. It's just an example of how it would work. So we can do semicolon ls and what you should see. And I apologize that my screen is so dark, dark mode woes, is that the ls command has executed successfully and it's listed out the contents of the directory that we're currently in which in this case is going to be hack this site missions basic 7 cal.pl well cal.pl is a script that's executing it um, obviously this isn't the actual path on the server it would be something like htdocs or varlib or yeah along those terms but you can see here that you've got a number of files, index.php, level7.php, cal.pl, and then this obscurely named PHP file. We already know what the other files do, they're standard web files, so if we take the obscurely named file and paste it into the URL, hopefully what we'll find is that we get a password. And as you can see here, the password is 628B896C. If we copy that and head back to the web application, resend the post request, and then paste that in the password submission field, we should get a congratulations, you have completed level 7. I actually found this challenge a lot easier than the previous one, although I did make that challenge a lot harder for myself by trying to script it. Um, the lessons that can be learned from this challenge is about trusting user inputs. Web applications should never trust user inputs. It should always sanitize them first. This ensures that if you do input special characters like semicolons or single speech marks or speech quotations, I forgot what they're called, 
um, that it's sanitized before it's passed to the operating system and this will help mitigate any remote code execution. Remote code execution is such a powerful type of attack that you can, well, given the privileges and permissions of the web server, you can do anything that you would do locally on the system. You could show the contents of files, you could write to files, create files. Um, yeah, you could theoretically tell the script or the operating system via command execution to visit a URL using wget and download a file or using curl. And then what you can do once that file is saved within the directory is navigate to that file and execute it and that would create a reverse shell back to your machine which would give you shell access to the server where the application is hosted. So it's of essential importance that you sanitize user input when building a web application. Anything that comes into the application from a user needs to be treated as untrusted and sanitized before any data processing is performed on it. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe, and I'll see you next time for part eight. Thank you very much. <laughs>